In this lesson, we are going to have a look at the different questions that can be asked about a cubic graph and how to interpret this graph. In the sketch, the graph of f is given. E and f are the stationary points of f. Before I have a look at the first question, let's see what is already indicated on the picture. Here they mention that E and F are the stationary points of F. So you can remind yourself that a stationary point is determined by taking the derivative and putting it equal to zero. Then on the sketch, we also have coordinates A, B and C, which are the X intercepts of this graph. And X intercepts are determined by taking the original function and putting it equal to zero. And then there's a y-intercept indicated at coordinate d. And we know that the y-intercept can be read from the equation as the constant value. So this coordinate will be 0 minus 30. So question A, calculate the length of AC. AC is a horizontal length. And to determine the length of a horizontal line, we need to know the x values at the starting and end point of the line segment. A and C are both x-intercepts of this function, so we need to start off determining the x-intercepts of f. And to do that, we are going to take the function and put it equal to 0 and factorize. From the factorization, we can determine that the x-intercepts will be at 2, at minus 3, and at 5. And this can be added to our sketch, so A will be at minus 3, 0 b at 2, 0, and c at 5, 0. And now it's easy to determine the length of ac, so we can simply write down that ac is a length of 8 units because it's from minus 3 to 5. Question b. Calculate the coordinates of e and f. As already mentioned, these are stationary points, and stationary points are determined by taking the derivative and putting it equal to 0. Here, the derivative will be minus 3x squared plus 8x plus 11. And when we put this equal to 0, we can then factorize and calculate our two x-coordinates. To find the y-values that fit these x-values, we are going to substitute the x-coordinates into the original function and determine the y-coordinates. So our two coordinates will be e, which is the negative coordinate, minus 1, minus 36, and f will be 11 over 3 and 400 over 27. Question C. Determine the equation of the tangent to f at d. When we did the lesson on determining the equation of a tangent, I mentioned that there will always be three steps to follow, and one of them will be to determine the point of contact, and that is point D, which is 0 minus 30, because it's the y-intercept of the function. The next step is to determine the gradient of the tangent, and gradient is shown by the derivative, so we take the derivative and substitute the x value of the point of contact, which in our case is 0. And this will give us a gradient of 11. So now we already know the equation is 11x plus c. The third step is to determine the y-intercept. And in this case, the point of contact is on the y-axis and therefore shows the y-intercept, which is minus 30. Question D. For which values of x is fx bigger than 0? In this case, fx bigger than 0 means where are the y values positive? So we are looking for the x values where this graph is above the x-axis. If we have a look at our sketch, there are two places where this graph is above the x-axis, and that will be to the left of the a-coordinate, and then again in between B and C. And to write this down, our answer will have two parts. Firstly, all the x values to the left of A, and those are the x values smaller than minus 3. And then the next part will be all the x values between B and C. So to write that down, x will be between 2 
and 5. Question 2. For which values of x is f prime x smaller than 0? Now here, f prime x means gradient and smaller than 0 is negative. So the question here is actually where is this graph decreasing? And if we now once again go and have a look at our sketch, this graph is decreasing all the way up to our first stationary point at E. And then again, after our second stationary point at F, the graph will be decreasing. So again, we have two parts to our answer. And the first part will be all the x values to the left of E. So that will be x smaller than minus 1. And then to the right of our second stationary point, so that will be x bigger than 11 over 3. Question 3. For which values of x is f multiplied by f prime smaller than 0? Here we already know that smaller than 0 means negative, but this time on the left we have a product. So in a product, to get a negative answer, the one value has to be positive and the other one negative. f shows above or below the x-axis, and f prime is increasing or decreasing. So for a positive f, that means above the x-axis, and that then has to be multiplied by a negative f prime, which means decreasing. Or we can have a negative f, which means below the x-axis, and this then has to be multiplied by a positive f prime, and that means increasing. So if we have a look at our first option, here the function needs to be above the x-axis, and as already mentioned, then we have two parts. But now this part also needs a negative gradient, and that means it should decrease. So if we only focus on the parts that we've already marked, we need to identify the parts that are also decreasing, and that is our first part, so everything to the left of A. And in the second part, only the second half, and that is everything to the right of F. So here we have two parts to our answer, all the X values smaller than minus 3, or all the X values bigger than 11 over 3. But now we still need to take our second option into account. In this option, we are looking at the values below the x-axis. So that is everything between A and B. And then again, after C. But for these parts below the x-axis, we also need an increasing gradient. And for this, there's only one part, and that's the part between E and B. So to write down this option, it will be all the x-values in between e, which is minus 1, and b, which is at 2. So in total, question 3 has three separate parts. Question e. For which value or values of k will fx equal to k have two distinct real roots? The equation fx equal to k means that we have two functions, the function fx and the function y is equal to k, which of course is a horizontal line. And the question here is about the number of points of intersection between these two graphs. The first question is two distinct real roots or two distinct points of intersection. So I'm going to start off drawing a horizontal line y is equal to k. So the first question is where should this line be drawn so that these two graphs have two real roots, or two points of intersection. And the first of these will be at the top turning point, or stationary point. And this is why my first option for k will be k equal to 400 over 27, because that is the y value at this stationary point f. Then this line can of course be moved down to our bottom stationary or turning point and once again only cut or intersect this graph twice. So our second option here is a k value of minus 36. Question 2. For which value or values of k 
will fx equal to k have three distinct real roots? So if we start moving this line around again, we will see that just above the bottom turning point, we will already have three distinct real roots or three points of intersection. And this will be the case right through up to the second or top turning point. As soon as we move above the top turning point, there's only one root. And if we move below the bottom turning point, also only one root. So these values will be anything in between the two turning points. So to write this down, we can say that k can be any value in between the bottom, minus 36, and the top 400 over 27 y value of the stationary points.